to Fish on Fridays. I'm Al McCauley. And if you've watched past episodes of Fish on Fridays, you know I love to break down pieces of classic art. And this is going to be one of those episodes. And if you've watched those episodes, you know I tend to gravitate toward a certain artist who has to be one of my favorites of all time. He's a late Renaissance painter from Italy named Caravaggio. And so this episode is about a painting by Caravaggio called The Incredulity of St. Thomas. I hope I pronounced that word right. Uh, it was painted in 1602, and, and it's just an awesome painting that depicts that classic story of Doubting Thomas that we get from John's Gospel, chapter 20, starting in verse 24. And we hear the, we know the story that Jesus has risen from the dead and his apostles have seen him, but Thomas wasn't present. And when he is present after Jesus leaves, they tell him, hey, the Lord is risen. And Thomas says, I won't believe until I put my fingers in his side and touch his wounds. And so the next week when Jesus does appear and Thomas is present, Jesus invites Thomas, says, says to him, put your hand in my side, touch my wounds and believe. And so this image encapsulates that moment perfectly. This, this picture is so graphic because it shows Jesus who kind of looks sad at Thomas's unbelief. But you see what's happening here is with his left hand, Jesus is lovingly guiding Thomas toward the wounds. It's like he wants to draw him to himself. In his unbelief, he still wants to draw him to him and, and us, by extension, to himself. Jesus is always trying to give us those nudges to try to bring him to himself and to the reality, to the truth of his life and to the resurrection. And with his right hand, what is Jesus doing? Jesus is pulling back his, his clothing to expose the wound. And I can't help but think about how this fulfills the idea of what's happened. When Jesus dies, we're told that the sanctuary veil is split from top to bottom in two. Now, why is that important? In the Old Testament times, the Hebrews in the temple, what they would do is they had this place called the Holy of Holies. It was their sanctuary. And they believed that's where the spirit of God resided. That was the, that was the most sacred place of the temple. And nobody but the high priest was able to go in there and only once a year. So for it to be ripped at the, at the death of Jesus, for it to be ripped open from top to bottom means that the Holy of Holies is exposed. So here's Caravaggio painting Jesus, revealing himself as the fulfillment of the Holy of Holies. I am now exposing myself, opening myself to everybody, to all people and all times and all places because of the resurrection. I think Caravaggio does such a masterful job of explaining this through art, just beautiful. A few things I want to say that I think are really interesting about this painting, too, that Caravaggio, little nuggets that you put in there. Notice in the left arm of, of uh, Thomas, notice that there is a, a hole in his sleeve. It's either that the seams have broken apart or there's a rip or a tear of some sort, and it's supposed to indicate a flaw. There's a flaw in Thomas's belief that he doubted too much. Now, let me stop right there and say something. Doubt is not a bad thing. Every relationship, whether it be with a friend, a sibling, a parent, a spouse, every relationship has times of doubt. It's what we do with that doubt that's important. Do we revel in it? Or do we, I'm sorry, do, are we mired in it? Do we, do, are we drowning in it? And do we let it crush the relationship? Or do we talk to the other person? Do we communicate? Do we try to work past it? Because when we do those things, it makes the relationship stronger. And I would suggest to you that when you have times of doubt with God, Take it to prayer. Have a conversation with them. Communicate with God. And I guarantee you it's going to make that relationship stronger. That's the essence of religion, really, is that relationship with God and working through those times of doubt. All right, back to Caravaggio's hand of Thomas. The, I talked about the flaw, the hole in the, in the garment. Notice that same arm, the elbow. It's almost like it's three-dimensional. Caravaggio paints it in such a way that it's sticking out almost off the canvas as if to nudge you and I. To anybody who looks at it, what about you? Do you doubt? It's, it's asking us that question. Do you, are, you, are you a person of faith? Where are you at with this whole relationship with Christ and his resurrection? It's fascinating to think about this. The other thing I wanted to point out is we're told in the scripture that the word Thomas means twin. And that kind of seems like a throwaway line when you think about it. Well, why, why do we need to know that his name means twin? Until you consider the twin responses, the two responses that we get from Thomas. The first is to doubt. And the second is to believe. And isn't that true of all of us with our faith? Are we not mired in times of doubt? And yet we come through it and have times of faith. And so in a way, we're all twins in that regard. We're all like Thomases. We're all doubting Thomases. 
And it makes me think about this. The way Jesus lovingly guides Thomas to the truth and reveals himself to all of us, what assurances in my life, what insurance, assurances in your life do you get from God? Does Jesus offer us to make us have faith, to help us have faith? It's an important thing to think about. Now, I want to close by going away from John's gospel and the Thomas story, but it still relates. And I want to explain Thomas's, this, this whole instance of Thomas through probably my favorite line in all of scriptures. And I mean that seriously. So we're going to go to Mark's gospel. In chapter 9 of Mark's gospel, there's a story of a man who brings his uh, child to Jesus. And this child is suffering and has a moot spirit. And it's f- forcing him on the ground. And he's writhing and foaming at the mouth. And, and it, he's really in a bad way. And it's been like that for a while. And the man asks Jesus if he can cure him, his son. And Jesus asks him if he has faith. And the man's, the man's response is my favorite line in scripture. It's got to be. And it comes from, it's specifically Mark chapter 9, verse 24. And the man says to Jesus, I do believe, Lord. Help me in my unbelief. I do believe, Lord. Help me in my unbelief. So going back to Thomas and kind of bringing this full circle, I would suggest and ask you to t- challenge you to take this to prayer. If you are doubting, if you do struggle because of anything that might cause doubt in your life regarding your faith, to maybe say that as a mantra over and over again. I do believe, Lord. Help me in my unbelief. I think that line can be so efficacious. It can help us so much to increase our faith, to, to make us closer to Christ, to make us know the truth, and to be more accepting of his love and mercy. I just, I just feel that. And so it's, it, I know at times in my own life when I've struggled, when I've really struggled, I've said, Lord, I do believe. Help me out my unbelief because I just don't get this. I'm not making sense of this. I'm scratching my head over this. Um, and you know, it always brings me some semblance of peace. So anyway, something to think about, maybe something to take to prayer. Again, a great painting by Caravaggio, a true master of the late Renaissance. Thanks for watching. I hope this has been helpful. Please feel free to share this content if you'd like to. Um, We'd love it if you'd subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook. But either way, please keep tuning in every Friday for more Fish on Fridays. Until next time, please be good to each other and God bless. Mm -hmm.